Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest, and welcome to September 12, 2024. We have about one hour and 40 minutes left of trading. And even though everything is in the green, at about midnight last night, it looked like we we're going to have a pretty big down a day. And we'll talk about why that would have been a true statement then, and why it all turned around, and why now all our indices in Australia are in the green. And a few of these indices are up a fair bit. All tech up 1.65%. So I'll have to talk about the American markets in a second. Uh, but before that, let's have a look at what we'll be discussing in today's video. Of course, I'll be going through the best and worst performing sectors, indices, and also companies. I've also come up with the top five stocks of the day. I have fiddled around with this list. I did exclude two companies, uh, but I will uh, talk about these two companies that excluded uh, also in this video, because they will be in the top performing companies more than likely. Uh, so you might be saying, why did I exclude them? Well, I just want to talk about a few other companies, a few other bigger companies, put it that way. Anyway, and then maybe I'll have a look at some charts, depending if I find anything interesting in the top performing companies and the worst performing companies as well. Uh, that's also going to be time dependent. So let's have a look and talk about why at midnight, you could have been said, we're going to have a really bad day, down day. In fact, at midnight, you could have expected, if nothing changed at that point, that we could have been down maybe one, one and a half percent today. So let's have a look at what happened on the American markets overnight. Uh, that is not the American markets. That is the all odds. A uh, pretty good day. I'll get rid of my, uh, what do you call that? The uh, scanner. And let's go to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ actually finished up two. 0.2%. The Dow Jones finished up 0.31%. And that is the whole reason why we've had a good day. Uh, I've noticed Nikkei is up 3.25%. So in fact, let's go to the Dow Jones first. This is really intriguing. And the reason I discovered this is when I actually had a look at the Dow Jones uh, daily chart, I noticed that their one day candlestick had a really long tail, a really long shadow below, below their main body. And that is implying that there was a lot of buying during the day. And at one point in the day, the Dow Jones was actually down big. And it was. In fact, if you have a look at the one-minute chart of the Dow Jones, you can see beautiful uptrend uh, from about midnight, just after midnight. But yesterday, the Dow Jones closed at 40,734. In fact, I have not calculated this. 40,734. And at one point, just around 1230, the Dow Jones was at 39,993. So the Dow Jones at the low point today was down at 741 points. So 741 divided by 40,734, which I, I just, that's close enough, uh, equals times that by 100. So it was down about 1.8% just after midnight. And then it went on a massive rally right on 12.30 or 12.30 a.m. our time. So what happened here? Fine enough, in trading view, you do have the option of clicking on this uh, little lightning bar and getting news. And when I actually looked at this in the morning, it was all about Oh, the Wall Street is down because of higher than anticipated or expected inflation. And that's exactly what happened. You might not be able to see it here. Here he goes. Here's one from Reuters. US stocks bounce back. Treasury yields steady after CPI debate. Uh, I'm just trying to find one article here that talks about uh, Dow Jones down a fair bit. You have to go back probably about 12, 14 hours. Here we go. Wall Street falls after inflation, data, debts, bigger rate cut hopes. Uh, so and that's the whole reason why we're down. In fact, you can see that just by look, clicking on the United States flag. Uh, so core inflation rate, about what was expected. Inflation rate, actual 2.5, forecast 2.6, previous 2.9. Inflation rate month on month, 0.2. Core inflation rate month on month, 0.3, forecast 0.2. Uh, that that was the, probably the only one that uh, maybe was a little bit higher than expected. Everything else seems like it was too planned. Even that one is almost too planned. So uh, if I had a look at these numbers uh, before I saw how the market reacted, I would have thought, yeah, the market wouldn't have done anything. 
And maybe you're not surprised that the market went on a bit of a tear after uh, 12.30. Not sure. So you would have been kicking yourself if you sold shares in Dow Jones or any companies uh, in America because it opened down. Uh, and because uh, after this, the Dow Jones rallied. In fact, it went from down 1.8% to being up 0.3%. Then NASDAQ finished up 2.2%. And a similar story here. Similar story here. The, 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 if I have a look, I'm trying to think. Uh, so the pre yesterday, it closed at about uh, 18,870, went down to 18,500. So we are talking about uh, 300 divided by 1,800. Whoops, I, I said that wrong. 300 divided by uh, 18,000 or so. So we're talking about 1.5%. Yeah, about 1.6% on open, and then just rally for the rest of the day. A beautiful rally for both uh, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. And that's why we are up today, because of this beautiful rally, this beautiful turnaround story in the NASDAQ and also the Dow Jones. So a little bit of pessimism in the morning, and that pessimism turned to optimism by about 1 o'clock our time. Yeah, so things happen when we're asleep, unless you're not asleep and you're following this, and hopefully you're not following this, and then you sold all your shares in America because of this bit of a sell-off in the morning. So how things change when we're asleep. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Woodside today. So let's say, anyway, so let's have a look at the ASX today. And it's been a pretty good day because what I just mentioned, what I've just been talking about. Uh, and uh, probably the only disappointing thing has been mining only up 0.26%, but uh, it's had a pretty good day yesterday. So let's have a look at the ASX or the best performing sectors and indices. Uh, IT up, NASDAQ. Energy up, probably oil has risen. Uranium, or oh, actually it would be uranium because I did see quite a few uranium companies in the best performing companies, uh, in the best performing companies of today, yeah. Uh, real estate's had a good day. Everything's had a good day apart from telecommunications and materials. Uh, a staples, when Staples is up 0.28%, I think that's a pretty good day for Staples. It should not move all that much from day to day. And if you have a look at the best performing, uh, what do you call this, indices, gold is up, banks are up, everything is up except for maybe resources. Now let's have a look at the ASX20 because it's only up 0.36%. So the bigger companies have had a weaker day than the smaller companies. So rah, for small caps, in fact, the small odds is up 1.35%, while the ASX20 is only up 0.39%. For those uh, small cap investors, you probably had a pretty good day today. I'll have a look at my portfolio, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it's up fairly big uh, because a few companies yesterday fell for some reason. Not sure. Uh, like EZZ Life Sciences fell 10%, and I'm going to cheat right now, and hopefully it's up at 5% at least 5%, I'm hoping. And for some reason, Comsec's not working. Why is Comsec not working? Let's have a look. Uh, it's up, well, it's only up 2%. Uh, got as high as 322. So it has been a little bit of selling pressure today, which is understandable. After yesterday's sell-off, uh, there's probably a little bit, of, still a little bit of panicking in the uh, company today. And the other company I wanted to check was SKS Technologies. It just keeps on dropping. And today we've had a bit of a bounce, a nice little bounce. Got as low as $1.06 today. I reckon that is uh, the bottom. I'm going to call right now, that is the bottom. Someone sold at $1.06 and more than likely they are kicking themselves right now for SKS Technologies. Anyway, I've gone off topic here. ASX20, uh, let's have a look at two companies down, 18 up. Okay, so the ASX20 is up 0.39%, but two companies down, 18 up, which tells me more than likely, the two companies down today are probably big companies. So maybe BHP, I'm going to say it's between BHP, Commonwealth Bank, or one of the banks, although banks have a pretty good day today. Uh, maybe maybe BHP, Rio Tinto. So let's have a look at which two companies are down today. And there we have, oh, Woolworths, yeah, BHP and Woolworths. If you look at the, the list of companies by market cap, uh, so BHP is the second largest company, and this is the reason why the ASX20 is down a little bit because it is down 1.78%. It's pretty significant. Everything else is in the green except the Woolworths, which is down towards the end, the bottom of the ASX20. That's interesting. Anyway, 
Let's have a look at the top and worst performing companies on the ASX today. We'll start with the top gainers. A company called Loxley Resources up 41.67% on a pretty big turnover. However, markup of this company is only $5 million. Now, based off the name of the company, the markup and the sector here, I'm assuming this is a mining exploring company, a company I've not heard of before. So let's open up to see what drilling results this company got and what, what actually they do mine, or not mine, what they are exploring for. Uh, so share price only up 37.5% now. Uh, chart's not going to look that good. And let's have a look. 11.2% Antimody result at the Mojave project. I'm assuming that's in Nevada or California. Probably California, I would assume. I'm pretty sure the Mojave Dev Desert is in California. Unless it's completely different. Uh, let's have a look. I'm just going to see if they've got a map. Oh, there it is, San Bernardino County in California. Uh, Desert Antimony Mine. Antimony. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, so the market has liked this particular announcement from Loxley. Is Loxley? Yeah. Lockley, Locklea. Heather Locklea. Loxley, no. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Heather Loxley. L-K-Y. I'm assuming share price is a bending down trend. This is just a little bit of a pop-up. We'll have a look at the daily chart and not the one-minute chart. Although the one minute chart is interesting. A lot of excitement on open, share price went to five cents and now it's pulled back to, according to this three cents. So let's go back, have a look at the daily chart. LKY, it's at 2.9 cents. So we are, in fact, it's fallen a fair bit. In the last uh, 20 minutes, it's fallen from 3.4 cents to 2.9 cents. So a lot of selling has come in for this company. And that's really understandable when you look at the longer term chart for this company. Uh, so share price has been a downtrend since this company listed back in 2021. And just shareholders just want to get out. And today they have maybe seen the opportunity to get out, maybe a little bit of profit taking as well. And even though a really big volume coming in, uh, we have seen a fair bit of selling pressure. So there's too much enthusiasm from the sellers right now to maintain the share price at the higher levels. And that's actually a negative sign. I'm going to put this onto my high volume spec just to see if the share price keeps on drifting back over the next few days. So this is the sort of, uh, so what I'm looking for are patterns. And I do recognize the start of this sort of pattern. So an interesting announcement, share price pops up and then almost immediately you see, see selling pressure and the share price more than likely, not absolutely will happen, but more than likely will drift lower over the next few days, next few weeks, even next few months, and more than likely will drift back to about 2 to 2.5 cents. It's already moving in that direction right now. Anyway, so not really interested in Loxley Resources. Triton Minerals are on low turnover, Bowen Coking Coal, uh, not much interest in these companies. However, when we get to number five on this list, we have Sensen Networks. Now, for full disclosure purposes, I am a small shareholder in this company. Share price up 23.5%. I saw the share price up and I went, oh, it's on fairly low turnover, but this company is illiquidly traded. So turnover of $39,000 is could possibly be a little bit higher. And I did not see any announcements from this company. I was like, hmm, what's happening here? And then I realized as I went to their page on Comsec, they actually did release an announcement, but after 10 a.m. 11.21 a.m., Sensen wins tender with the city of Calgary. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, less than a month ago. They won a contract in Montreal, Canada. So this company is starting to win a lot of contracts in Canada. Go Canada. Go Canadians. Uh, I want to have that. I actually have not had a look at this announcement just yet. The market has liked it. I'll show you the chart in a second. The chart is starting to look a little interesting. But the share price has, again, just like Loxley, sold off a little bit. Now, of course, this for some reason, this announcement is not opening up. Don't know why. Might have to go to, might have to go, here we go. So, Wins tender to provide mobile and fixed camera technology in the city of Calgary. The tender to provide mobile and fixed land enforcement systems with a first year value of $1.9 million. That's a pretty nice order. Full contract value for the which a purchase order has been received is $4.65 million over five years with two additional two-year extension period options for a total possible length of nine years. I'm finding it hard to read. 
Uh, that's really interesting. And because this company is starting to win a little bit more contracts, it's becoming a little bit more interesting for me. I would like to see the company becoming profitable and cash flow positive, but I do think it is on that trajectory. Now, that's that's what I think. Now, just because that's what I think doesn't mean uh, you have to buy shares in this company. So make sure if you even think about buying shares in this company, do your own research. Is this company right for you? So let's have a look at the chart for Sen San. And there is one reason I bought shares in this company. It's just because share price was in a downtrend. It started to show signs of turning around. And then I bought on a little bit of a dip here somewhere, about it was like three to 3.4 cents. Forget exactly what. And also I started to like the volume. We started to see some peaks in volume. And then that's exactly what I want to see. So it's moving in the right direction. I would have preferred a green candlestick today. Share price did get up, get up to 5.1 cents. So a little bit of selling, but that's okay because this is a liquidly traded and you will see a little bit of volatility. In fact, if we go back to their Comsac page, just have a look. So we have a buyer at 4.2 cents and the lowest seller is 4.8. So all it needs is one buyer to come in and force a share price up. It wouldn't be surprising to see all it took was one seller. Yeah, one seller at 152.55 set a share price down from 4.6 cents to 4.2 cents. Yeah, so that's all it needs for these type of illiquidity companies. One seller, one buyer, and you can force a share price up or down by 5 or 10%. And so that's a company I do like, but I have a very small holding in this company. And one of the reasons I did buy a small holding is just so I can follow the company a little bit more closely. And that's that's all. Yeah, that's all. That's the only reason. Well, it's not the only reason. Uh, as we go down further list, we have another company I want to talk about. And both of these companies, Sensen and AML3D, could have made it onto my top five stocks of the day. In fact, they did make it, and then I decided to exclude them in favor of two other companies, and I'll talk about those companies later. Uh, so AML3D up 19.2% on much larger turnover than at Sensen. Now, this is a company I have mentioned a few times in the past. I have done a few standalone videos, AML3D. There we go. So our first one was October last year. So almost one year ago when I introduced the company. And then I looked at their December quarter results in February. And then this became a bit of a, I don't know, it became a next investor thing. And that's why the share price took off. Uh, we'll have a look at the chart in a second. Uh, they did release an interesting announcement today. AL3, AML3D. Uh, it, this is the announcement. Uh, MFA agreement to expand AML3D's delivery to US Navy. In fact, again, just like Sensen, they do have numbers within this particular announcement. And that's exactly what I like to see. Uh, that's uh, right down the bottom. A $1.1 million Akami system sale to US Navy. Component supply laser welding. A $1.54 million US defense contract to facilitate copper nickel alloy qualifications and a few other orders there as well, or contracts there as well. So it uh, looks like they're developing a relationship with the US Navy. And to be to be honest with you, that's not a bad thing. That's a pretty good thing. Developing relationships with uh, the US Navy, any sort of US defense uh, forces uh, cannot be a bad thing. In fact, the US Defense Force or the US Defense developing a contract or a relationship with that particular thingy. Anyway, so interesting company. Have a look at my two videos on this company, my introduction video to learn a little bit more about this company. So let's have a look at the chart for AML3D. And we can definitely see where Next Investors got really excited right here. So they sort of uh, recommend this company. And then I found out that AML3D actually paid for Next Investors recommendation or something like that, something absurd. Uh, and um, apparently that's what they do. Yeah, And the share price took off. So First time I talked about this company was way back in October last year. Share price at that point going sideways, kept on going sideways for the next eight or nine months at around about seven to eight cents. So plenty of time to think and do research on this company. Share price took off, has pulled back. In fact, the share price pulled, pulled all the way back to 12 cents. And now we have seen a little bit of movement in the share price. Now, probably the biggest problem is the volume. We haven't seen massive volume, very a much lower volume than we saw back in early July when the share price took off. Uh, volumes on those days were getting up to about 40 million. Today, it's 5 million. In fact, it's 11 million, according to ComSec. I'm not sure if TradingView, 
includes GX. I have a feeling it doesn't. Anyway, at least it's consistent. So that's AML 3D, another small company on the ASX. I don't think it's profitable just yet, but just like Sensen, maybe it is on that trajectory of becoming profitable, cash flow positive in the near future, or maybe within the next year or two years at the latest, maybe. Okay, so let's get to the top five stocks of the day. And I decided to include uh, Resolute. Resolute. They did, and this is the gold company, uh, share price up 5.8%. Group exploration update, Senegal and Guinea. Now, I think most gold companies have had a good day. So I wouldn't be surprised to see there's a little bit of excitement in gold today. That's why, or well, that's one of the reasons why a Resolute share price is up. But then this one was interesting. You don't really see in the title, by the way. So again, if you look at the title, just group exploration update, Senegal Guinea. It tells us nothing. Uh, in fact, the only reason I opened this particular announcement up, because that sort of title does not interest me, was because there was just a dearth of interesting announcements. So I just thought I'd open this one up. And when you look at the title on the announcement page, it's much better. Increased mineral resource, uh, resource at Mako Satellite Tombo Ronkoto and initial mineral resource declared at Mansala in Guinea. I always like when I see increased mineral resources. We saw that with a company I mentioned yesterday. Was it yesterday? Or the day before? Or the day before? Someone, uh, or maybe I didn't even mention it. Someone did increase their mineral resources. Oh, Catalyst. That's it, Catalyst. I think it was Catalyst. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, so that's an interesting announcement for Resolute. Uh, and that's pretty, all much, pretty much all I read for this. Uh, it looks like they have projects in Ivory Coast. Or Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, horrible pronouncing that. So let's have a look at the chart. And they've got projects in Senegal. Let's have a look at the chart for Resolute. Is this a time to get excited about this gold company? Oh, that's the wrong one. That's uh, London Exchange. Australian Exchange. Chart looks brilliant. This is a beautiful looking chart for Resolute. Probably my only complaint. When I look at this chart and this announcement today, low volume, but the chart is absolutely brilliant. Share price sort of broke out back in late March at a share price of about 40 to 43 cents. Uh, and the share price now is 67. So share price has increased 50% from when it broke out back uh, about six months ago. So pretty nice chart from Resolute, a pretty good announcement from the company and the share price has rallied today. Coming in at number four, we have Brickworks. This is the other company that I just included because, yeah, I, I just thought I just I just thought I'd just talk about Resolute and Brickworks because they're just they're pretty big companies. Uh, in fact, Resolute has a mark up of one point four billion, and Brickworks has a mark up of three billion. I'm going to guess three billion. Let's have a look. 3.974 billion, not far off. Share price down 2.74%. They did do a write-off. I don't care about write-offs. They are sort of, uh, who cares about write-offs to be cared? This is a non-cash impairment of Austral Masonry Brickworks. And I did see an announcement uh, or some sort of article, journalist article saying, share price of Brickworks fall or drops on write-off or impairment. And who cares? I don't really care. It's non-cash. Uh, this. It, I have always thought about this ever since, I think it was 2014, when the the articles in the newspapers were, Qantas loses $1.5 billion, and also because of write-off, because of one-off. Uh, you have to take into account one-offs. I mean, I mean actually, no, I'll put it another way. When you look at the whole picture of a company, and you see uh, the profit for one year, you have to know if there was any sort of one-offs in that because it can change the whole picture. So when you see a massive loss for one year, more than likely it's because of write-off. Sure, the company accounting-wise or technically lost money, but make sure you have a look at uh, the cash flow, that sort of thing, to see if the company's not burning through cash and all that jazz because the media will hype it up to no end. My God, this company lost $2 billion. Sky is falling. 
So at least uh, the market hasn't fallen victim to this sort of scenario with Brickworks. Share price is down a little bit, but not down by a lot. Uh, cash impairment, not that much, I suppose. Uh, uh, recognize a total non-cash impairment charge of $123.5 million. Uh, and that's probably all we have to talk about. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk about uh, Brickworks is because of the market reaction, down 2.7%. It's not that bad. And also wanted to have a look at a chart. I haven't looked at the chart for this company for a while. Uh, I would always chart, actually, it looks negative. I would always have a debate uh, when it comes to Brickworks. Would I consider this company high quality? They have a pretty special relationship with Sol Pattinson. And would I consider Sol Patterson to be a quality company? Uh, one of the things I do with Sol Patterson or Washington H. Sol Patterson is I look at the companies they own and then I, I say, do I consider those companies to be high quality? And because of this relationship between Brickworks and Sol Patterson, I think there is definitely a debate that if you consider one company to be high quality or low quality, then probably you should consider the other company to be low quality or high quality. I, I would probably tend or trend more towards calling these companies high quality just because they keep on increasing their dividends. But, and if you have a look at the chart for both companies, you'll see a definite trend over the long time or the long term. So this is the weekly chart for Brickworks and it's exactly what you want to see for a high quality company. It keeps increasing through time. In fact, for some reason here, maybe not some reason, I put a long-term uptrend line in Brookworks, Brickworks, Brookworks. Uh, if you have a look at the monthly chart, maybe, yeah, beautiful chart. I probably drew this on the monthly chart because it goes back to 1998. Share price back then, or 1999, was down around about three or so dollars. And this is exactly the sort of chart you want to see when uh, you decide a company's high quality. Share price from the bottom left to the top right. This is definitely an indication. So the only thing I'd look at, but it's definitely, if you thought a company was high quality, and then you had a look at the chart and saw this sort of chart, it would sort of confirm maybe your suspicions that a company is high quality. Uh, the valuation of the company keeps on increasing through time. It doesn't mean the company now is good value. In fact, if I had a look at this chart for Brickworks, I'd say, oh, I would love to buy shares in this company if the share price fell below $20. Uh, definitely if the share price fell to, say, $19, $18, I would become excited just based off this chart, nothing else just based off the chart. Uh, if, again, if you have a look at double uh, Salt Pattinson, Washington H. Salt Pattinson, uh, you're going to see a fairly similar chart as well, I believe. Yep. Another sign of a high quality company. So I don't think you can go wrong with either of these companies. And there's always a debate, which one should you own? Yeah, that's individual preference, I believe. Anyway, so that's Brickworks. Let's go back to their chart. BKW, is this a buying opportunity? Share price is starting to move down. And I, in fact, just by looking at this chart, if I see the share price drop a fair bit, you can see the share price back in uh, September 2023 drop down to about 22 or below $23. So that was a buying situation. And the last time the share price fell, uh, well, when the share price rose above $20 was way back. Uh, in June, July 2022, after we saw the bit of weakness in the market. That was absolutely brilliant buying time for Brickworks. Share price actually fell to $17. Uh, so the chart in the short term looks pretty weak. And today hasn't helped for Brickworks. Okay, so let's move on to company coming in at number three. I have talked about this company the last few days, I think. Vonex. Now, when I've been talking about this company, usually it's in reference to Swoop. There is a bidding war for this company going on. A company called Vonex with a market cap of, I'm just going to have a look at this, market index. Mark, I'm assuming market cap's like $6, 7000000 million. $15 million, I was way off. Uh, in fact, I should have known that because uh, when Swoop took a 17% position, they only spent like 2 or $3 million. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Uh, so my capital of this company is $15 million. Yes, there's a bidding war for this company. I just can't believe it. And today, the so there's a company called Swoop, which is listed on the ASX. They are bidding for this company. And another company called, uh, another company called Maxotel is bidding for this company. And today, 
Max Hotel increased their scheme consideration. Initially, it was like three, what was it 3.75 cents per share? They've increased that bid to 4.19 cents per share. So a nice little increase uh, in the share price they want to buy this company for. And this is really, you do like to see bidding wars when you do own shares in the company. But my first thoughts uh, when it comes to Vonex is there's a reason there's a bidding war because the market has completely sold off on this company. There's probably value in this company, maybe even significant value in this company. Uh, the market's completely missed that value. Share price has really sold off. And then I'd be saying to the management, why are you selling this company when it's really cheap? These are opportunities to take over bids. Uh, don't sell, don't sell. And this is another reason why uh, a company, a, a founder-led companies are really awesome because more than likely, if this was a founder-led company, there's no way they would accept any of these takeover bids. In fact, more than likely, there wouldn't be a takeover bid uh, because the founder would say, get lost, piss off. Uh, yeah, get lost, that sort of thing. Uh, so I would say, we don't even know in this company well, that Vonix is not founder-led. I could be wrong. Maybe the founder wants to get out. The reason I say that is if you have a look at the chart, and I would say that uh, shareholders who've been in this company for a while, uh, maybe they just want to get out because the share price has been in the downtrend for a long time, which I think I've already mentioned. Uh, so I do still think this is an opportunity to take over bid, bids for the company. Uh, share price did get as low as one cent not that long ago. Uh, that price, there's the mark. This company had a market cap of like three, four billion dollars. In fact, Soup could have bought the whole company for that 17% stake that uh, they took the other day. Now, I'm just gonna have a quick look at Vonix because I have looked at this company in the past, but fleetingly or not for very long. Uh, so, I'm just, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go have a look at the most recent financial results. Let's have a look. I was going to open up their four-year financial statements. Um, I might have a look at their appendix 4C. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at their appendix 4C. I just want to see if this company is close to being operating cash flow positive, that sort of thing. I have a feeling they were operating cash flow positive a few years ago, and they are. Okay, so this is interesting. So receipts of customers, $13.3 million in the last quarter, $53.6 million in a year, operating cash flow positive, almost $5 million for the year, $1.7 million for the quarter. I'm assuming they are spending a fair bit of money in investing activities. Nope. That's all going, to, or most of that is going to the bottom line. The cash on hand actually increased $800,000 over the past uh, three months from 2.1 to 2.9 million. So there's definitely an argument that this company is cheap. And that's why we are seeing a bidding war for this company. And if I was management, I'll be telling all these companies, get lost. No, piss off. Go find your own thing. Uh, this company is really undervalued at the current prices. And I'm just wondering what uh, Vonex shadows are thinking right now. Uh, anyway, so I don't blame Swoop. I don't blame the other company, Max, Tell, Max Hotel. They probably see value in Vonix. Vonix. Can't believe I've been talking about Vonix the last few days. Australian Clinical Labs. This is an interesting one. So the other day I did a video including Challenger who had a major share to sell at a pretty big discount. And I thought, why are you selling at a discount? And the share price of Challenger fell like a rock because of that pretty big discount. I don't think it's recovered yet. Yeah, here it is. Fell 10%, 11% on the 5th of September because of this uh, big share to just selling a large amount of shares at a fairly big discount. And yeah, the share price hasn't recovered. Uh, and what I thought uh, when I saw this particular announcement from Australian Clinical Lab, sale of Crescent Capital shareholding. I thought, oh, this could be another challenger. Uh, and all they've mentioned here is they've sold their 30.12% stake in a block trade, and they no longer hold shares in Australian Clinical Lab via its various investment vehicles, which is interesting in itself. And I thought, oh, this could be interesting, but no, share price is up because they didn't sell it much of a discount. Uh, we didn't see it today. We saw it last night. Uh, I don't know exactly how much they sold it for, but the share price did not respond. Very little response. Uh, a bit of a low, 316. So maybe they sold it towards about $320, something like that. Uh, in fact, I probably want to see if we can find this uh, online somewhere. Crescent. Oh, you know where we, we could be able to find it? Uh, in their announcements. Change in substantial holding. No, it wouldn't be there. 
I'm surprised we haven't seen a sub change of substantial holding or something like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, they sold it for 200 million. We know that, but it doesn't say what price. Let's see if it's in the AFR. No. XM, something called XM. No idea what this is. Uh, except or. Uh, okay. So maybe yeah, there was a little bit of a sell off uh, on open, looks like. 5.1% uh, down at 316. So I'm assuming they sold at about 316. So uh, maybe 320. So not a massive discount, nothing like Challenger, which was a pretty big discount. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Australian Clinical Labs. Probably the other big difference between Challenger and Australian Clinical Labs is the chart. Now, there was a bit of weakness in Challenger. And I think because of that little bit of weakness, not massive, a little bit of weakness, this um, shell to selling out was like, Cause for concern for some shelters, and they just dumped on market. Shrank Clinical Labs is a little bit different. In fact, there's a lot of positive sentiment in this company right now, and I'm assuming Crescent Capital just saw the rally in the share price and went, "Now's the time to sell." Uh, in fact, I would say the shift, definite shift or change in sentiment, it's gone from negative to positive, and a shift in trend in the share price. So, in fact, this is a pretty nice looking chart and a nice recovery in the share price today. For Australian Clinical Labs. This has been popping up on my radar the last few weeks, and you can see why. So pretty good day for Australian Clinical Labs. Pretty good week for Australian Clinical Labs. Pretty few good weeks for Australian Clinical Labs. <clears throat> okay. Coming in number one, we have a company who whose CEO has resigned. And if I had to... Uh, talk about the theme of today, it would be CEOs resigning. Uh, so what I do every single day is I go through announcements and I did find quite a few CEOs resigned today. So let's have a look. Uh, in fact, I won't do this. Uh, yeah, actually, no, I will. Market sensitive. And not a lot of announcements today, only... Why is it saying 388? There's not 388. I, sometimes I don't like ComSec. Just 60. There's been 60 market or price sensitive announcements today. This is the lowest for the week. I think we might get above Tuesday because I would expect the last uh, few. We have not had. Oh. oh, ComSec is really. There we are. Oh, no. Let's go back in the day. Uh, first announcement or price sensitive announcement was 8.21 a.m., which is fairly late. A lot of times you will see price sensitive announcements released before 8, not today. Uh, the first CEO resigning uh, was, I'm probably going to miss one, a company called Equity Story Group, CEO resignation and appointment. Uh, and that company has a market of $3 million, so fairly small company. But then within two announcements, so within th four announcements, we saw Three announcements um, mentioning that the CEO is resigning. So we have Equity Story, CEO resignation appointment, a company called Prescient Therapeutics, Prescient CEO to step down in early 2025, and uh, NIB Holdings, NIB Managing Director and CEO Mark's, Mark Fitzgibbon to step down 30th of November. And there might be one or two after this. I can't remember. I don't, maybe that's it. So we saw four CEOs resigning within... Not much time. It would have been like five minutes of uh, releases of announcements. But the, probably the biggest one was Nine Entertainment Holdings. Uh, Nick Sneesby stepping down. Now, a lot of times you can see how the market thinks of a CEO by the market reaction. If the share price goes up a fair bit, the market hated that CEO and that they think this is a good change. If you see the share price dropping when a CEO steps aside, it's usually an indication that he's done a pretty good job. And Nine Entertainment Group share price has dropped four per set, which probably is telling me that market saying, oh, he's done a fairly good job. Probably it's hard to run these type of companies. Good luck to you if you try. Uh, but uh, we're a little bit uncertain about who's going to get into the new role, the new CEO role for Nine, and they could do a horrible job. So a little bit more risk for Nine Entertainment Group. I'm interested to see how the other companies have responded. Now, Equity Group is a small company, so we can move on to Prescient Therapeutics, down 7%, another small company. 
What about Nib? N I B. Where is it? Did I go straight past it? I might have got straight past it somewhere here. Oh, there it is. Yep, went straight past it. And NIB is up 3.85%. So the market's thinking, ooh, this is good. Uh, getting rid of Mark Fitzgibbon could be a good thing for the company. Anyway, so let's have a look at um, Nine Entertainment Group. And there's one reason I wanted to show this company. It's usually the chart. It's really the chart. But anyway, the Mike Sneesby has stepped down. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any reason he stepped down because I have not opened up this announcement. Uh, could be for some personal reasons. Uh, I doubt it he was uh, pushed aside. Chief Finance and Strategy Officer Mark Stanton has been appointed as acting CEO with effect from 1st of October. Uh, let's have a look to see why. Oh, I, I, I don't want to say he was pushed out. Just the, the second paragraph, following the successful completion of the Olympics and Paralympics, Mr. Sneesby and the board consider now is the right time for a transition of leadership to take nine into the next phase of this strategic transformation. I would say more than likely the board has gone, you're not really doing enough, maybe, something like that. Uh, maybe you're just not the right person uh, to lead this company into the future because the future is uncertain for this type of company. And you can definitely see that with the chart. Maybe the board was getting a little bit of a little bit of uh, pull from major shareholders because of the chart. So let's have a look at the chart for Nine Entertainment Group. Uh, and this is an ugly looking chart. Chart share price has been a downtrend for most of 2024. In fact, the share price has fallen from above two dollars to one dollar and nineteen cents. So not quite down fifty percent just yet, but it's moving in that direction. Share price was trading in a range. So for a, for a while, share price of Nine Entertainment Group was trading in a range. This was between June 2022 and February 2024. That range was between about a dollar and eighty cents and two dollars and twenty cents, and then it broke through that trading range on the 22nd of February. Results shows the importance of uh, importance of uh, financial announcements. Broke through the bottom of that range uh, on that particular day, and you should have sold. To, to be honest with you, any shareholders should have sold on that day. That was a breakdown. You could have sold at a dollar and seventy cents, and share price just kept on dropping. Uh, share price fell through another support level, a dollar thirty-two, which is a pretty big support level, which goes all the way back. I put this line in. Goes all the way back to uh, two thousand nineteen. There was a bit of a dip. Share price bounced off that level, and not only that, share price bounced off that level twice in two thousand twenty. Fell through it during the COVID-19 financial panic, but I'm going to ignore that, uh, but did hit this level twice um, in 2020, June, and also in July, 2020. So nice little double, um, I wouldn't say double bottom, but nice little testing that level twice. And most importantly, share price has fallen through $1.32 on a pretty good strength a few weeks ago. And now the share price is $1.19. So that was another uh, time to sell if you're holding shares. So at a dollar and nineteen cents, the share last month share price was this low for nine and Tamer Group, apart from COVID-19. Apart from COVID-19, you have to go all the way back to 2017. Uh, and then the share price only was below this uh level for a brief period of time, for maybe a year. Oh, you bet a year. That's not that's not too short of a time. Uh but again Let's have a look at the weekly chart for this company and compare this to Brickworks. And uh, the, this is a weekly chart, by the way. Uh, if you look at the monthly chart, yeah, let's do that since we're looking, we're comparing. So if you compare this particular chart to Sol Pattinson and Brickworks, which are the higher quality companies? It's not nine entertainment group. I can tell that much. Share price up and down, up and down. Uh, there's no trend at all. And that is the definition of a company that's not high quality. High quality company share price should go up through time. In fact, the share price right now is below where it was when listed back in late 2013. Was it late 2013 or early? Yeah, late 2013. Share price right now is lower. Uh, so shareholders have not benefited, have not seen their capital grow uh, in this company. They've received a dividend, but that's about it. I uh, said so definitely a nine entertainment group is not a high quality company. And to be honest with you, we should all know that. We all should know 
this is not a high quality comedy. Uh, they just have so many headwinds. In fact, I, I'll tell you about one headwind. I don't watch um, TV anymore. Well, that's a lie. I don't watch commercial TV anymore. There's just too many other options out there. I have not sat in front of a TV unless we have guests. That's the only time I will. Like my parents still watch commercial TV. That's the only time I watch commercial TV. It's a dying uh, means of entertainment. It's a dying means of entertainment. There's just so many. The world has opened up to all of us in terms of how we get entertainment. And this sort of uh, entertainment is just gone. It's it's leaving. It's just it's going bye-bye. Eventually, it will go bye-bye. I know. Uh, that's all I have to say about night. And I th I'm pretty sure they have other stuff, too. Uh, they have magazines, maybe radio stations. Uh, I'm trying to think what else they have. I remember looking at this company many, many years ago. Uh, I'm going to have a look at their presentation because they'll have what they actually do uh, provide in their uh, presentation. The only value I see these type of companies having is when it comes to sport. That's the only time I would watch these sort of um, stations. But even then, even then, I would either watch via KO or watch it on Nine Now or their apps. I don't watch it, like it on TV. And those apps do have commercials, that sort of thing. But I do that quite rarely. And the only reason I will watch those sort of apps is if it's not on KO. That's about it. You know, it's taken a while to open up. And I'm pretty sure they will mention, oh, Domain, they own a bit of Domain. I forgot about that one. Oh, there we go. Mike Sneezeby, no longer the CEO. Bye-bye. Talking about advertising, subscriptions. Here we go. So this is what they own. So Total TV, nine, go, win, nine now. Uh, so I do watch a little bit of nine now, but not a lot. Uh, it's, and it's mostly because of the spot. Like the Olympics. I, ha I, I watched the Olympics via, was it nine now? And I watched the international telecast. I did not watch Australians, uh, you know, broadcast or the, the uh, commentary. I hate. I prefer the international um uh, commentators, less bias. Uh, Total Publishing, Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, Brisbane Times, Financial Review. Could even say that's a dying uh, thingy as well. Uh, and radio stations, 2GB, 3AW, 4BC. I can't remember the last time I listened to a radio station. It's probably 10 years now. Don't need to. Uh, Stan, Stan Sport. I'd probably say that's the most valuable thing. That's the only two things I could see or imagine growing in the future. Stan and Stan Sport. So sort let's of see if they have grown. And uh, if there's any growth things here by um, sector or whatever you want to call it. Divisionals, here we go. Uh, and I just want to see, yeah, da, da, okay. Uh, so yeah, you can go through this uh, yourself, I suppose. I just want to see how the different divisions are performing. And I would assume that Stan and Stan Sport are probably the best performing out of all these. Uh, Domain, or maybe Domain's doing okay. I could be completely wrong, by the way, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, they're talking about, the, talking about uh, trading updates. Nine now. Talk about how nine now is growing. The revenue in that is growing, but that's probably at the expense of their like commercial TV. Stands growing pretty nicely, according to that. Publishing, not talking about much growth there. Domain, some nice growth there. And I wouldn't expect radio to be growing all that much either. Uh, okay, so that's what I'm going to talk about when it comes to nine entertainment group. Uh, looks pretty weak. Uh, CEO stepping aside. Uh, chart looks pretty bad as well. Everything looks pretty negative for nine entertainment group. And I am going to leave that there for this particular video. Uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.